Actor Jan Michael Vincent had it all. Looks, fame, money and incredible talent. But years of drugs, alcohol and trouble with the law saw his acting career dry up and put his life at risk. Jan Michael Vincent is a name many are familiar with. The tragic demise and death of Jan Michael Vincent is surely one that highlights the troubles that come with stardom. The Hollywood star who rose to prominence, suffered tragedy and left us with a silent exit. His ascent to prominence was fast, from his early years fashioned by a military background to the unexpected turns that catapulted him into acting. What's happening? Pick up a storm! In this video, we will take you through his glory days, the apex of which was the classic TV series Airwolf, as well as the personal challenges that have hampered Vincent's career, including fights with addiction, legal issues, and the toll on his health. Prepare yourself for an emotional journey as we commemorate Jan Michael Vincent, a guy whose life exemplifies the nuances of Hollywood celebrity. The Early Years Jan Michael Vincent was born in July 1944 in Denver, Colorado. Belonging to a military family, his early life was affected by the trials of his father's military career. In 1941, his father, Lloyd Whiteley Vincent, enlisted in the United States Army embarking the family on a journey defined by relocations. Growing up, he experienced the upheaval of repeated moves, which led to what he described as a somewhat wild existence. Despite the setbacks, Vincent found solace in an unexpected hobby, surfing. It was the only thing he enjoyed while growing up. This passion for riding the waves became a steady companion throughout his life. Jan Michael attended school in Hanford, California, and graduated from Hanford High School in 1963. His scholastic odyssey continued at Ventura College, where he spent three years before being redirected by an unforeseen turn of events. His path to acting happened by chance while he was attending Ventura College in California. When a talent scout noticed him, it opened the door to his first excursion into the world of acting. This detour diverted his attention away from a possible future in oceanography, which he was pursuing at the time. However, an important aspect of his life was also his role in the military. Vincent recalled his father's rigorous influence, noting connections between their experiences in hierarchical systems. He was drafted into the California Army National Guard and served until 1971, reflecting his father's military career. From the unpredictability of his upbringing to a chance meeting with a talent scout, Vincent's unorthodox route lay the groundwork for his eventual entry into the world of acting. He had no idea that these early events would not only affect his personal life, but would also pave the way for a career that would see him become a rising star in Hollywood. Beginning of Acting Career Jan Michael Vincent's rugged good looks and natural cinematic presence catapulted him into Hollywood's spotlight. This chance meeting in the late 1960s and early 1970s signaled the start of a promising acting career. During this time, Vincent appeared in a number of television shows, including Dragnet, Bonanza, and The Banana Splits Adventure Hour. However, it was his appearance in the 1968 picture, The Bandits, that brought him into the spotlight. His performance received favorable feedback, paving the door to further significant jobs. Vincent had a productive decade in the 1970s. He co-starred in Going Home with Robert Mitchum and created waves in the critically acclaimed surf picture Big Wednesday, directed by John Milius. Big Wednesday had particular significance for Vincent since it allowed him to combine his acting profession with his passion for surfing. His performance in the film is widely considered to be one of his best, capturing the essence of a free-spirited yet tormented surfer. Jan Michael Vincent's journey to fame was rapid. His all-American good looks and on-screen personality made him a popular leading man. In 1972, he was nominated for a Golden Globe for New Star of the Year for his work in The Mechanic, and he also appeared in Disney's The World's Greatest Athlete and the cult classic White Line Fever during this time period, solidifying his image as a rising star. Vincent's career peaked in the 1980s with the television series Airwolf, in which he played the primary character Stringfellow Hawk. Vincent's depiction as the solitary pilot of a high-tech military aircraft hooked viewers in with the show's blend of action, adventure, and drama. 
At the height of Airwolf, he was one of television's highest paid actors, reportedly making up to $200,000 per episode. Despite his professional success, Vincent's personal life was fraught with difficulties. His rapid rise to prominence came with its own set of pressures, and he began to struggle with stardom's demands. As the 1980s progressed, his personal problems began to eclipse his professional accomplishments. Nobody knew that the man who soared high in the Hollywood sky as Stringfellow Hawk in Airwolf was on the verge of a downward spiral. This downward spiral would radically alter the course of his life, ushering in a turbulent chapter in the life of a once famous Hollywood star. The pinnacle of his career. Jan Michael Vincent's career peaked when he appeared in the revolutionary 1980s TV series, Airwolf. The show, which debuted in 1984, quickly became a fixture on American television, enthralling spectators with its exhilarating aerial combat and cutting-edge military equipment. In Airwolf, Vincent played Stringfellow Hawk, a recluse pilot and Vietnam War veteran tasked with recovering a stolen supersonic attack helicopter called Airwolf. This aircraft, outfitted with amazing armament and stealth capabilities, served as the series' focal point. Vincent's performance of Hawk was a great blend of stoic intensity and underlying sensitivity, and it struck a chord with both viewers and critics. His performance stood out because of the depth he brought to his character. Hawk was displayed as a moody loner with a great appreciation for art and music in an era dominated by action-oriented television, adding a dimension uncommon in similar shows. The character required a nuanced portrayal, with Vincent balancing high-energy aerial exploits with quiet meditation. This difficulty emphasized Vincent's acting ability as he effectively transitioned between dramatic action sequences and the character's personal issues, such as Hawk's never-ending search for his lost brother during the Vietnam War. At its peak, Airwolf went beyond television and became a cultural phenomenon. The series became well known for its stunning aerial sequences, which were a big lure for viewers. The namesake helicopter, Airwolf, became as legendary as the automobiles in Knight Rider and the Dukes of Hazard. The show's popularity stretched beyond the screen, creating memorabilia, a devoted fan following and computer games, all of which contributed to its enduring impact. During his time on Airwolf, Vincent's popularity skyrocketed, making him a household name, his image was featured in publications, talk programs, and different types of media and commerce, cementing his position as a leading man and a symbol of rugged American masculinity. Despite his fame and fortune, Vincent encountered difficulties. The pressures of running a high-profile series wore him down. His performance and demeanor on set began to suffer as a result of the hard shooting schedule and personal issues. Reports of tardiness, unpreparedness, and issues collaborating with others appeared, casting a cloud over his professional reputation. Despite the obstacles, Jan Michael Vincent's contribution to television history became preserved in the legacy of Airwolf. His performance as Stringfellow Hawk remains a watershed point in his career, demonstrating both his versatility as an actor and the difficulties that come with popularity and success. Plagued by abuse and addiction, Jan Michael Vincent's career soared with the success of Airwolf, but behind the scenes, his life was disintegrating due to substance misuse issues. The popularity and pressure that came with his profession were a double-edged sword that drove him to use drink and drugs as coping techniques. In Hollywood, Vincent's difficulties with substance misuse were not hidden. Stories about his drinking and unpredictable behavior began to circulate, generating anxiety among those close to him. His once promising career was clouded by personal troubles, and the actor who seemed destined for long-term stardom became well known for all the wrong reasons. His substance usage had a wide-ranging impact on his professional life, personal relationships, and health. His dependability was called into doubt on the job. Reports of him being late or not turning up at all became more common, jeopardizing his ability to perform. Tensions with producers and co-stars grew to the point where his actions had a direct impact on the production of Airwolf, contributing to his eventual resignation. Vincent's personal life was a mess. His addictions harmed his relationships, resulting in several marriages and divorces. The repercussions of his substance usage masked the charm that had formerly endeared him to fans and co-workers, 
and he struggled to establish stable and healthy relationships. The most sad side effect of his addiction was its impact on his health. His physical well-being was harmed by alcohol and narcotics, resulting in a succession of health crises that tormented him for the remainder of his life. Vincent got involved in a serious car accident while under the influence of alcohol in 1996, breaking three vertebrae in his neck. This episode served as a terrible reminder of the perilous path he was on, but even a brush with death couldn't sway him away from his addictions. His substance misuse had legal consequences as well. Several run-ins with the law, including arrests for drunk driving and domestic abuse, harmed his public image even further. Because of these legal concerns, he found it more difficult to get work in the business. The actor, who was previously a sought-after leading man, was now regarded as a liability. His struggle with marriage. Jan Michael Vincent's personal life unfolded alongside his professional success with a series of setbacks. He married Bonnie Poorman in 1968, and they received their daughter, Amber Spring Vincent, in 1973. Their voyage, however, came to an end with a divorce in 1986. Notably, Vincent was charged with felony assault the same year, but was acquitted after his attorney stated that the putative victim had slipped and fell in his home. Vincent remarried in 1986, this time with Joanne Robinson, despite the problems of his first marriage. Unfortunately, this marriage also had problems, prompting Robinson to seek a restraining order against him in 1998. Allegations of abuse during their marriage placed a pall over this period in Vincent's life. A $374,000 default judgment was obtained against him in the year 2000, adding to his legal woes. These legal problems originated from charges of physical assault by a former partner, which resulted in their child's unfortunate miscarriage. Vincent's problems persisted when he breached probation the following year, earning him a 60-day sentence in Orange County Jail. This judicial action was brought as a result of his public intoxication and assault on his fiancée. Jan Michael Vincent's personal life reveals a terrible journey behind the scenes, marked by divorces, legal fights, and allegations of abuse. Managing a career decline. Jan Michael Vincent's once thriving career took a severe dip as a result of the intertwining of his personal and professional challenges. He found himself in a completely different landscape after leaving Airwolf, facing the harsh realities of a ruined reputation that made casting directors and producers leery of his unpredictable behavior. Vincent, formerly a television star who demanded top salary, now had few options. The jobs that did come his way were typically for low-budget pictures and ventures that did little to highlight the talent that had once propelled him to stardom. Instead of high-profile employment, he took on roles in B-movies and direct-to-video productions, many of which were lambasted by reviewers and failed to resonate with consumers. Projects like Alienator and Jurassic Women were a significant departure from Airwolf's peak, contributing to a drop in the quality and exposure of his parts. The decline of his on-screen presence was closely related to the status of his personal life. Vincent's continued battle with addiction, as well as the physical toll it caused, made it increasingly difficult for him to perform at his previous level. His health had also begun to deteriorate specially after the vehicle accident of 1996, kicking off a series of medical troubles that would follow him for the rest of his life. The charisma and energy that characterized his early work were frequently missing replaced by a sense of fatigue. Despite brief glimpses of the old John Michael Vincent, such as a supporting role in the independent film Buffalo 66, these appearances were infrequent and did little to change the overall direction of his fading career. The financial ramifications were significant, with his Airwolf revenues now a distant memory. As his once opulent lifestyle shattered, Vincent experienced major financial difficulties, including bankruptcy. He was beleaguered by debt and the loss of assets, including his home. Jan Michael Vincent's professional fall became a tragic tale of wasted promise. He had previously been at the peak of his profession, admired by fans and revered by peers, but he had now been mostly forgotten by an industry that had once lauded him. Financial and legal complications. Jan Michael Vincent's fall in health and career was accompanied by a journey through financial and legal challenges. 
further complicating his already turbulent existence. While these challenges were caused in part by his own struggles, they added another layer of complexity to his already difficult situation. The public became aware of Vincent's financial problems in the 1990s, despite significant earnings during his peak years, particularly from his role in Airwolf, his fortune faded. Substance misuse and health problems led to reckless financial management, culminating in his bankruptcy filing in 1997. This was a clear indication of how bad his financial situation was. The performer who had once lived in luxury now battled to maintain even a moderate standard of living. The loss of his home and assets acted as a tangible representation of his fall from grace, from a famed actor to a struggling single parent. Vincent's financial problems were exacerbated by legal issues. His substance misuse problems culminated in multiple arrests for alcohol-related offenses, including drunk driving. These occurrences resulted in legal bills and fines, further complicating his already terrible financial circumstances. Vincent was charged with domestic violence, too. These legal fights took a toll not just on his income, but also on his mental and emotional health. Because these legal difficulties were made public, they caused embarrassment and stress. The once admired actor was now more frequently seen in mugshots and court appearances than on the big screen. This shift in public opinion was a tough pill to swallow for someone who was once a popular figure in American entertainment. His financial woes had an impact on the industry as well. His untrustworthy behavior, which was exacerbated by financial and legal issues, made it difficult for him to get roles. Producers and directors became wary of casting someone with such a history of erratic conduct, thus limiting his possibilities to make a living as an actor. He sought to resurrect his career by appearing in lower-profile projects, but his attempts were mainly futile. His legal and financial problems remained a cloud over his attempts. Vincent's financial and legal problems serve as a sobering reminder of the ephemeral nature of fame and money in Hollywood. Time for our subscribers' pick. Jan Michael Vincent's tragic demise and death are one that might make you cry. A series of medical complications in his later years combined with the hard partying lifestyle that accompanied his meteoric ascent to stardom, took its toll on his health, and the consequences were crippling and terrible. Vincent's near-fatal car accident while under the influence of alcohol resulted in a broken neck and serious throat lacerations, causing irreversible damage to his vocal cords. His voice, which was once a vital part of his on-screen image, became scratchy and breathy. Vincent struggled with a number of medical concerns in the years that followed, which were aggravated by his persistent substance misuse. Multiple bouts of pneumonia, a potentially fatal condition given his debilitated state, exacerbated his health problems. An infection necessitated penile amputation, ushering in a period of numerous hospitalizations, operations, and deteriorating quality of life. Vincent's physical appearance changed considerably, he was once recognized for his rugged good looks and athletic build, but he became thin and physically ill. Maintaining abstinence was difficult due to his deteriorating health, and continued abuse compounded his medical difficulties. This cycle had a catastrophic effect on his health as well as his capacity to work. His financial situation was wrecked by the same health concerns that afflicted him. The cost of medical treatment, operations, and hospital stays grew exorbitant, far beyond his reduced salary. The financial hardship added to his stress, hindering his rehabilitation. Vincent openly expressed sorrow for the decisions that brought him to that point in interviews, noting the toll his lifestyle had done on his physique. Despite this, he frequently appeared resigned to his situation as if he had accepted the consequences of his conduct. What heights could he have reached if not for the downfall due to his bad decisions? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Loss of limb and retreat into solitude. Jan Michael Vincent's later years were defined by a severe sense of solitude and a sequence of health disasters culminating in a limb amputation. As his popularity faded and his personal problems worsened, he withdrew from the public spotlight, becoming increasingly estranged from an industry that once admired him and followers who had adored him. Following the zenith of his fame, Vincent's isolation became a defining element of his existence. 
His struggles with addiction, legal issues, and financial difficulties had turned off many friends and colleagues in the profession. The man who was once a regular at Hollywood parties and gatherings was now virtually gone from the social scene. His presence missed and his absence recognized. Though his departure from public life was not totally intentional, as revealed in interviews in which he voiced disgust with Hollywood and a wish to move away from the spotlight, it was also an indication of his deteriorating mental and emotional health. Depression and substance addiction made it difficult for him to interact with people, and his increasingly reclusive demeanor worried those who cared for him. Vincent was physically and emotionally isolated. He separated himself physically from Hollywood, matching his growing separation from the entertainment world by spending much of his time in Mississippi, far away from the bustle of Los Angeles and the industry that had once been crucial to his existence. The brilliant lights of celebrity had faded, leaving him alone to wrestle with his problems. The physical evidence of his terrible journey was the amputation of his right leg. After acquiring an infection, he was forced to make the difficult decision to have his leg amputated. This measure devastated not only his physical health, but also his sense of self. The once athletic actor, noted for his physical prowess, faced a future of mobility issues and reliance. The loss of his limb played a big role in his increasing isolation, making it more difficult for him to interact with the outside world. The amputation became a symbol of the many losses he had suffered over the years, including his career, health, and public image. Furthermore, the solitude had a psychological impact. His difficulties had harmed his mental health, and in rare public appearances and interviews, he expressed resignation and sorrow. The confidence and charisma that had previously defined him had given way to fatigue and distance. The irony of Vincent's life emerged in the shadow of his enormous popularity. The actor who had once been at the center of Hollywood's glittering universe was now on the outskirts, mostly forgotten and alone. His fall from grace served as a reminder of the transitory nature of stardom, as well as the harsh truths that frequently lay beneath the famous mask. The Last Years of Life Jan Michael Vincent's latter years were defined by melancholic tranquility, a dramatic contrast to the chaotic world he had previously experienced. His health deteriorated further, and he faded farther from public view, spending his days in relative obscurity, far distant from the sparkle and glamour of his Hollywood heyday. In his later years, he lived in North Carolina, leading a tranquil life far apart from his fame as an actor. Public appearances were extremely rare, and information about him became scarce. He lived humbly, a great cry from the opulence he had once known. The sparkling mask of celebrity had long since gone, leaving behind a man battling with the consequences of his previous existence. Despite his departure from the spotlight, his name would periodically appear in the media as part of retrospectives or Where Are They Now articles. These tiny insights into the life of a man who was a mere shadow of his former self, both physically and mentally, provided brief glimpses into his life. The once enchanted presence had now been tamed, like a once burning fire had been extinguished. As his health deteriorated, he grew more reliant on the care of others. Vincent's latter years were filled with introspection. In rare interviews, he expressed sorrow over the decisions he had made and the routes he had pursued. There was a clear sense of what could have been, a realization of unrealized potential. His youthful recklessness and sense of invincibility had been replaced by a sobering realization of his mortality. Despite his difficulties, he had moments of solace. Vincent found solace in the basic pleasures of life, free from the strains of Hollywood expectations. He relished the natural beauty of his surroundings, as well as the tranquility given by his solitary existence. The simplicity also gave him a sense of tranquility, in contrast to the chaos that had previously engulfed his life. The Silent Death Jan Michael Vincent died quietly in February 2019 at the age of 74, his departure veiled in seclusion, matching the tranquil life he had in his final days. His death, caused by cardiac arrest, completed a final chapter with the same delicacy that marked his later years.
Vincent died gently behind the gates of Mission Hospital in Asheville, North Carolina. Bradycardia, or a slow heartbeat, was discovered to be the underlying cause. Surprisingly, the public didn't learn of his death until March 8th, when TMZ broke the silence by disclosing facts from Vincent's death certificate. This delayed disclosure exemplified the reclusive atmosphere of his final hours, emphasizing the isolation he wanted, even in his departure. Jan Michael Vincent's journey from the heights of celebrity to the loneliness of his final days culminated in a quiet death, matching the peaceful chapters of his later life. A lesson to be learned. Jan Michael Vincent's legacy serves as a cautionary story, providing a powerful lesson about the linked nature of celebrity, personal choices, and the consequences of unbridled battles. His biography exemplifies the frailty of success as substance misuse, court disputes, and health difficulties led to a precipitous decline in his career. The lesson from Vincent's journey focuses on the need of keeping balance under the pressures of celebrity. His once promising career was eclipsed by personal issues, demonstrating the negative impact of addiction on both professional and personal well-being. Despite the difficulties, Vincent's legacy encourages reflection on the fleeting nature of celebrity and the need of overall well-being. His experience highlights the importance of making good decisions in the face of success, navigating the demands of the entertainment industry, and understanding the possible hazards of a public existence. Ultimately, Jan Michael Vincent's legacy reminds us to prioritize mental and physical health, adopting decisions that ensure a lasting and meaningful existence beyond the transient sparkle of the Hollywood spotlight. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again in our next video.